This is Twit. So you can de- you can install the developer preview. This is D- uh, developer preview one of Android 12. If you have you know a whole host of Pixel devices, I'm, I'm I didn't look at the list, but I'm assuming it's Pixel two and newer. I was able to install it on my uh, Pixel 3a that I have right here, um, which you wouldn't really know. Like I have it installed on here, but you know once again, it's one of those things is really at least at this stage, kind of hard to see that I'm that I'm running anything other than, you know, any other, you know, version of Android that we're used to to looking at, um, which is interesting. Does dark mode work? Uh, well, where is dark mode? I feel like I had it. Oh, maybe Burke, but I'm not going to look for it right now because I can't, I don't want to spend time looking for it. Um, maybe while Michelle is talking, I'll, I'll be able to find the, the dark mode and switch that on. But um, what I think is interesting is that a lot of what we were hearing about in the leaks, and of course, you know, XDA was was instrumental to kind of the release of the information, is all about this like this UI redesign. And I don't know if that's Monet, what we were seeing before, as far as like this very different. It's it's it was almost kind of like an amber um, theme on Android and looks looked very different from what we're used to seeing. We're not seeing any of that in Android 12 developer preview one right out of the box, but you have been kind of diving in and, you know, triggering some of this stuff on your own to make it happen. Were you able to kind of get to a point to where you could replicate that, that view? And does that tell you anything about what we can expect versus what we're seeing right now? Right. So, since this is a developer preview, um, Google intentionally disables a lot of their public facing changes um, because they want to wait for a big reveal at IO where they'll announce a whole bunch of features and put up videos and blog posts and all that stuff. Um, that's when they'll show off a lot of this stuff. So the images that we saw before DP1 dropped last week, those are from a design mockup. Um, that Google shared with their OEM partners to give them an idea of what some of the features and the theming capabilities will will look like in the new Android OS release. So even though they disabled um, all those features in Developer Preview 1, there are still, um, in order to make it easier for internal testers, they still leave some hidden commands in, they still leave the code in, and so basically us and a few others um, dove into the code and figured out what commands they were using, how to trigger some of these hidden features. And based on what we've seen so far, there's a total of about 20 hidden features that we've enabled. Um, it feels like we've gotten to a point where we were able to match what we saw in the leaked images. And we've also shown off a lot more features than we originally knew existed. And it's important to note that those features won't necessarily make the final release. They're just at the current state of development now that that that, because google could pull stuff back in future versions right they've certainly done that before yeah yeah Yeah. right so as an example of that um we first saw hints of the scrolling screenshots feature in android 11 but the button for it was completely non-functional um that's not the case in android 12 it actually works now it's a little bit buggy it doesn't work everywhere but it actually works so it looks like it could make its way into this release so there could be features like that that are seemingly functional here, but Google is not happy with the way they function, and they might hold off on them for Android 13. When you're going in, I'm just curious about process here. So when you're going, when a new version like the developer preview drops, and suddenly you know you and the other folks at XDA are like, all hands on deck. <laughs> it's time for us to spring into action. It's like the, it's like the Batman symbol is, is in the sky. And now suddenly you're being, you're, you're being beckoned to like destroy it and pull it apart and everything. Like, are you, are you literally just going through and like testing every little thing that you find, switching them on and seeing then how that interacts with what you see on the screen? It seems like that would take a lot of time. How does that work? Well, we're not blindly testing everything that we see. Um, we're able to, f- basically, um, our process is we compare applications and files from the latest Android 11 release, for example, and then we download the firmware for Android 12, and then we compare them and we see what's new. 
if we see something that sounds interesting, we'll dig deeper into the code and see, is there a way we can enable this? And if so, how? So then we try it out. And if it works as we expected, um, then we have something to show off. Um, we're not just like blindly finding things and turning it on, seeing what it does. We already have an idea of what it'll that do. Would be and we're me. Seeing if we can actually show it off. That would be me if I was working at XDA. I'd be like, oh, I don't know this thing. Switch it on. Yeah, sure. Whatever. It's a letter. Go. Uh, yeah, you guys are a little bit more systematic about it. So that's good. <laughs> it's probably more effective that way. <laughs> um, so this is OK. So so I understand why Google isn't making the developer preview, you know, represent all of this, you know, like this, this, these major UI changes that we're kind of expecting. But it does kind of seem like there's there's a lot of things that kind of hint at that. You know, you you wrote you guys wrote about new lock screen and notification UI. Uh, the Pixel uh, is going to get some some lock screen clocks uh, as and I don't know if that's exclusive to just the Pixel or, or maybe initially and then eventually it gets broadened out. That wallpaper uh, wallpaper theming system Monet. Um, uh, just a whole lot of like UI and design and visual um, optimizations that are changed. But, but again, like I mentioned, like I've got it, you know, I've got it running on my phone and you really wouldn't know the difference between this and Android 11 as, as it stands right now. If you, if you were, if you were a betting man, would you think that one of Android 12's big, like marquee, um, kind of features is going to be a major UI refresh. Like that's one of the things that Google's really hanging its hat on this time around. I think that's absolutely what they're aiming for. So um, one of the first things that um, we discovered is a feature flag called Silky Home. And that right. changes the settings app and basically all the settings menus to be much more one-handed friendly. If you've ever used a Samsung phone and used one UI, then you'll know exactly what that looks like. Basically everything is shifted down like about um, 25% from the, from the top. Um, that coupled with the fact that it's now a dedicated one-handed mode feature that you can trigger that wor works just like Apple's reachability feature suggests that one-handed one -handed usability is one of the biggest changes coming to Android 12. So I think this is definitely one of the biggest changes that they're going to make. Hmm. Do you think that this has any correlation? This might seem kind of like a left field question, but I'm just sort of curious because of just like current events and where we are at. Do you think that development of this is, you know, that we're looking at the sort of really big release because of the fact that we kind of, it was kind of an incubation period? Or do you think that this is something that was just, I mean, planned just based on what you guys have seen? So a lot of these features had to have been planned like many, 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 many months ago. Um, we know they've been working on this stuff since at least the middle of 2020, if not earlier. And they had to have meetings with product managers um, and a, a whole bunch of other people internally at Google to decide what features are, are we going to work to introduce an Android 12 and what are we going to hold off for a future release? Um, I don't know, like the stars just align to make this one of the biggest um, feature updates in years. It just looks like this is the year we're going to see so many features that we've been waiting for for years. And like Android 11, Android 10 didn't really introduce very many changes. Um, this is more akin to like Android 5 lollipop, how massive that update was. Wow, I mean, that's a big deal. Um, and, 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 it, and part of, yeah, but, but part of that is to is is um, like we're I, I feel like we we collectively we all agree we're due right. But, but to your point, it seems like some of this stuff is stuff that was in development that was never quite there, and that it's just like it, it almost seems like they've got enough now to make a really big push for it. Um, and how much of the how many like is is it more just the confluence of the you know the one-handed UI and the or the uh, the different UI optimizations plus the theming and the wallpaper like you know they could have spaced that stuff out but the fact that they're all timed at the same time 
is potentially making Android 12 bigger than perhaps, I mean, this is all speculation mm -hmm. than they had planned at that point in the roadmap when they were rolling out 11, right? Is it, is it, do you think it's, how much of this do you think is just kind of happy circumstance versus actually they plotted this to be so big? I think it's definitely a bit of both, probably more planning than just circumstances led to this way. I mean, a lot of these features um, are a natural progression of what they've already been working on. So, like, for example, this wallpaper-based theming system is not actually an entirely new theming system. It's basically just taking exactly what they already have and making it so um, it can use another API to extract colors from a wallpaper. That API right. was introduced all the way back in Android Oreo. So they're oh, using that right. API to extract colors from a wallpaper, and then they're applying um, themes based on that. And those... APIs for theming were introduced also in Oreo. So they're just taking bits and pieces and expanding slowly a lot of the features they already had or were working on. Right. You guys I mean, also either way, a, oh, 12 yeah. is a really nice number to do a really big release. So, <laughs> well, a snow cone. Yeah. well, so and going through some of the stuff that you guys posted, like the one thing that caught my eye was this, you know, the, the audio coupled haptic effects. So, like, tell, tell, can you share with us what that is and why that potentially could be so impactful? It's it's more of a neat gimmick yeah. than an actual like game changing feature. So basically, what that feature will do is, um, if you have, if the phone you have has a, a motor that's capable of really really subtle vibrational effects, then this new API will be able to basically produce waveforms based on whatever audio is playing and it can vibrate your phone according to the audio. So in the article that I posted, we had a tester who played a bit um, from a few Daft Punk songs and you could basically hear the song even though the audio was muted from the phone because it was just vibrating according to it. Um, you'd have to turn out the audio to actually hear that, it vibrate according that, to the song. I'm sorry. I just had a moment. That sounds like an accessibility feature to me or like the beginnings of one. <laughs> you well, know what I mean? Google like something it. to, yeah. you know, uh, help those who who uh, can't hear to get into the music mm -hmm. on their phone. I don't right. know. Just an idea. <laughs> you know what it reminds Google me of? Google seems to. Oh, sorry. I was I just going to say real oh. quick, it, it reminds me of what was that watch that you brought onto the yes, show? Flo? I was, I just unpacked it today cause I was cleaning my room. <laughs> I have it. Yeah. It was like a vibration that watch too. that you can sync up with your music, right? Wasn't it mm -hmm. syncable to the music so that, yeah, mm -hmm. you'd feel the bass on your wrist or something like that. It's kind of hilarious. Sorry, actually. Michelle, go ahead. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry. Right. Michelle. So it, it, since it's an API, it can be used by any app that wants to produce um, their own custom vibrations. So Google says you could you could have like your video calling app uh, create vibrational ringtones, or you could have your gaming app make vibrations based on whatever is happening, you know, in the game. Um, music playing is obviously our test case here because it was the easiest to implement by right. the developer. But yeah, this is it's an open API, and the only requirement is that your device has to support um, the kind of really fine-tuned vibrations that are required for this to work. And unfortunately, Google's latest Pixel 5 and 4a 5G don't support it. The only Pixel phones oh. that do support it are the 4 and 4XL 4 